Hi, this is Greg Luss, a city manager in, in Lebanon, New Hampshire. Welcome to Lebanon in Depth. And today I'm happy to say that I'm joined by our mayor, Georgia Tuttle. Um, Georgia and I uh, are celebrating the end of the year. This is a holiday, our holiday show uh, for the holiday seasons. And uh, uh, we're, we're, we, uh, we have, uh, as everyone should have, uh, although you got to watch your diets, we, we do have uh, with us today some delightful eggnog. And we also have some delightful um, uh, Christmas cookies from our, one of our local grocers. And this is from our local dairy in the area, so um, it's, it's quite rich. I, I really love eggnog. Some people don't like eggnog, but I really do. But I don't, you know, my wife says I got to keep it out of the house. I'd be drinking gallons of eggnog. <laughs> <laughs> we just, I mean, I mean, you try to, you know, watch your, you know, try to control your, your, your weight expansions during the, the holiday season. A bunch of eggnog like this is, is too much to ask for. But, but Georgia, welcome. And um, I think it's always interesting to we start our shows. Uh, when per persons are on our show, so to just, even though many people probably already know all the kinds of things about you, uh, it's still it's interesting, some people don't, because I find new people all the time coming to Lebanon and then they watch our show. And, uh, but, but basically, you're our mayor and, um, and you're foremost are one of our council members, which is the way the, the council operates, a great kind of democracy of all nine being equals. Um, but could you first tell us a little bit, how did you get into city council? How did you get into the mayor role in the council? Well, I, I actually got involved initially um, with our zoning changes that we were trying to implement uh, about eight years ago, going to meetings and seeing how interesting uh, city government was, getting to know a few people and getting involved in the controversy. So I ran for city council and got elected. And then uh, we are a, a strong city manager form of government. And so the mayor is elected by the council. And uh, I'd had a lot of leadership experience in that realm on a national level, and so I ran for mayor, um, hoping I could bring some um, some uh, uh, procedural mm -hmm. skill to the council that I'd been fortunate enough to pick up. So that's how it happened. Well, that's nice. That's nice. And in terms of, uh, I know you. You said you have so many interests. Um, you know, you, you, your profession, for those who don't know, is what? I'm a dermatologist. And you're also very active on the national scene in, in, with regard to medical association. What, what's the activity there for you? I'm on the board of trustees of the American Medical Association where we're working to improve the health of the nation through uh, diabetes and hypertension control. So we've got a whole bunch of national programs. We're working with the YMCA. So it's been a really exciting uh, four years doing that, traveling to Washington, working on health system reform. That's really wonderful. I'm, I'm glad we have people like you up there. Uh, and working, uh, it's, it, and associations are such wonderful things because they bring professionals together from across the, across the all all boundaries, and you have them from all over the all over the world in the United States. It's just amazing what a, amazing people amaze me. Some of you know these the persons how much they know and how much what they think about and ideas like that. And to, today, uh, maybe we could also mention you know the role of mayor in in the and the city council in in, in Lebanon. Um, some people have misimpressions of the role of mayor. I mean, even sometimes the media kind of get, you know, out to lunch on what a mayor does in Lebanon because, I don't know, people would say, well, who's the mayor? Well, it's John, you know, it's, it's Daly, the Daly machine. You know, that's the, you know, the, you know, who, who, you know who's the mayor? It's, uh, you know, it's, it's somebody that's powerful, elected uh, to be the administrative chief executive officer of, of a local city. And, so could, what, in the, our role here, in the, uh, our mayor in, in the Lebanon City Council system or the charter, how would you describe it? Well, it's, it's actually more of a chair. Uh, in Lebanon, the, the mayor is elected by the nine city councilors, and the purpose of the mayor's job is to run the meetings, to follow Robert's rules, to keep order, and to treat all people fairly so everyone gets a chance to express their thoughts and to speak. Um, no one's given preferential treatment. Uh, the mayor has no more power than any single councilor. Uh, I, as the mayor, have one vote like every other city councilor. And the mayor does sit with the city manager uh, a couple of times a month and works on the agenda. 
so that the items that counselors and the public want to hear about and, and have aired publicly um, are brought to the forefront. But basically, the, the mayor is a ceremonial position in Lebanon other than the, being the chair of the council. So, it's, so I am not like Mayor Daley or the mayor of the city of New York. Yeah. Uh, it's an unpaid position, as are all city council positions. And, and it's really very different than what uh, I think many people perceive it to be. There is no power associated with that office. Yeah, so they went to Mayor, go tell them to do that. I mean, I think all our counselors are really good about being receptive and li good listeners for our, our members of our community because they come from the community. Our, our, our people are very much grassroots people coming from our community from various walks of life and they reflect our community, the diversity, all the smartness and, and the quickness and the creativity and all the desire for sustainability, but also there's a desire to be a, be a very healthy and, and, and a place where people can make a living and have livable jobs. and so. I like the council because it's such a good cross-section reflection of our community. We also, and you, when you're absent, then we have an um, assistant mayor, and that's Sue Prentice. Yes. And that's really great, delightful to have Sue with us, and, and, and so she plays the same role as you do. I think we were talking a minute about earlier, how do we end a, a year in the holiday season? And I think one of the things I think it's, it's a touchy season because everyone feel you kind of feel you know sometimes when things happen during Christmas you kind of wear it on your sleeve because things happen and you start at the end of the year and you think about you know you, there's been losses there's been gains there's been passages there's been changes people's lives are you know are a moving livable living thing in our community and I think cities are very organic and in, 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 in terms of natural. Um, naturally, people want to come together and, and be together and live together and, and get along together. And so, so I thought we'd reflect, the, and, and we talked a little bit about reflecting on this last year, and, and just kind of a potpourri of, of, of things that may have stood out for you or I, and hopefully we might mention something others might think of during the course of the year, that, that just stand out as something we'd want to mention. Yeah. Uh, would you like to g give it a start in, in terms of where you, you know, just, I don't think we're going to be like A to B to Z. I think we're going <laughs> to bounce around a little bit. Well, there's a couple things that I can think of, but the, the one that I think pr crops up this season is uh, the uh, historical study of the Crafts Avenue neighborhood. Um, you know, when I first moved to Lebanon, there used to be historical society lectures every month or so. <clears throat> and the historical society, or I believe it was historical society this year, decided to, uh, take on the Crafts Avenue neighborhood, and that neighborhood is going to decorate itself as, as if it were back in 1964 when it was first created. And so uh, on December 20th at the Kilton Library, there'll be a, a meeting talking about uh, the history of Crafts Avenue and um, celebrating its, its uh, anniversary. I think it's its 50th anniversary this nice, year. So, nice. so um, I'm looking forward to that because it's, it's a neighborhood I've walked through. It's in my, my ward that I represent. And uh, I have some friends who live there. I actually went down in the basement and dug out some of my mom's 1964 Christmas decorations and gave them to one of the residents on Crafts Avenue. So I'll encourage people to take a walk down Crafts Avenue and see if they can figure out which house has our old uh, 1964 decorations oh, nice, in the window. Nice, nice. I know people were gathering up and getting decorations they had from that era. You know, and I, somebody was showing me some of those decorations. Which is really fascinating. It seems so fragile. Most of our decorations have been broken. <laughs> I mean, in all our different moves in my family, um, uh, Ruth and I take it, I think we've broken all our good decorations. But we had some delightful ones, but they just couldn't stand the moving. And, but, but some folks have been really are just uh, exquisite in terms of being able to care for things like those decorations in the house or on the trees, and they have preserved them, and, and they're, they're showing them mm -hmm. in this endeavor of, of, of kind of highlighting crafts. Um, we have done our, wa a walk our one of our walkabouts which on crafts and um, that was very, you know, it's a, it's a wonderful street. It's a good feel. There's people with children on that street. There's people that lived on the street for some time. Um, the street feels, I mean, it, it's like, and when I'm thinking about it, it goes back so far and, yeah, and it's experiencing change because the River Park uh, development's on the other end now and right. the, the change is coming there. They've experienced things like speeding cars and, and I know I talked to parents about, you know, what can we do about the speeding cars uh, when, they, when they see, they want their kids to be able to play and, and they're playing in the front yard. And you know, when a, you know, a child might go after a ball or something into the street, that there is a you know, a challenge to, for the parenting. Uh, and I remember well having three children 
I'll be careful. I wanted to be careful when I had the children playing in a place where near a yard, near a road, and 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 so you start out with history, and and then you add this the, the presence of walking mm -hmm. about and having a major development next door, and people trying to raise their children in a block like they've been raising their children before, mm -hmm. and you're having this difficulty of of of, spe of cars. One of my common pet peeves for the year has always been, since I arrived here, is people, too many people speed. I mean, I told people before that if I was, had one wish, if I had a, my Christmas wish for everybody in Lebanon, would, if you would please slow down. And, you know, the speed limit is, is, is meant to be a limit. I suggest you drive under the speed limit. And that would drive everybody crazy sometimes because people are so used to, like, then they'd be, they'd be tailgating you and doing this. But if we could slow ourselves as a, as a world and slow ourselves with these vehicles, um, one, we'd save so much dollars and so much harm to others. And, so, and, and, and we would just be a, a more relaxing place if we could just accommodate our psyche that, that whether I'm here for in 30 minutes or 20 minutes or 10 minutes, in the long course of life, it doesn't really matter. So you slow down. If you please, so if any of you hear my Christmas wish, please slow down in Lebanon, and please specifically slow down in on Crest Avenue because it's next to impossible to regulate the the speed on Crest Avenue with the way we have our rules. So let's self-regulate. Let's do the right thing. Don't speed on Crest Avenue. If I see you speed on Crest Avenue. I, I don't know what I'll do. You know, I, I might just get, get you know, medieval on you. But don't be speeding on, on Crafts Avenue. If we could all do that, we, that's our Christmas wish for Crafts Avenue. Nobody speeds on Crafts Avenue ever, ever again. Um, the other piece that you mentioned was the Kilton Library, and then I think also the downtown libraries. And one of my thankful things in this year has always been the, li the library experience in the, in the community. I, I just watch that libraries, those two libraries, and watch what they're doing, and and seeing the difference between. And I talked talk on the show before about at Christmas time. I often would go visit my grandmother Eva Lewis, and she was a city librarian, a little city library called Inman, Kansas City Library, and she had been she was librarian there all her life, and she was also the chair of the board of trustees of the library, but she was also the. She was a, they didn't know conflict of interest in those days. So she was both the, the, the library and she was the chair of the trustees who were supposed to oversee the library. But um, the libraries uh, of Lebanon, um, it really is a, if I was going to look at decorations on a tree, beautiful decorations, I would say the decorations of, of the two libraries in their, their respective ways are, are really something I, I'm thankful for, and, and this year is the, the libraries continuing march to the to keep the best of the, the, the past, but, but get the best of the future. And the technology they're using is really exquisite. Their their, their website is really wonderful. They have a, a librarian that's also a technology person, and, and they, that is partnered with the other librarians. And uh, that's added new features to the offerings. Um, really community centers for us. So. So I think, I, I just look around the, our, 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 our city and I always see these spots that just jump out. I mean, that p the other communities don't have libraries like that. Mm -hmm. They have libraries, but they're not like that library. We, we are very lucky in Lebanon with our libraries. And I had a librarian mother, so I can identify with the, 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 the fabulous uh, job li the libraries do. Other things that you think of in this year? Well, I think the thing I'm probably proudest of is the the, the uh, City Council's Governance Committee decided to look at the structure and organization of the some of the City Council of the City Council itself. You know, we've been trying to get people to run for council, and often the the comment is it's too much work. There's too much work. So we've been able to streamline a lot of our our efforts this year by uh, going and looking at committees that were established back some in the 1970s, some in the 80s, some in the 90s and looking to see what, uh, whether the jobs they had been assigned to do had been accomplished, and then setting up a task force system so that we can now be much more nimble to get things done. Um, it, it has lightened the city council's workload because we have fewer subcommittees for each council to serve on. So we can make, for those of you interested in running for city council, the, the job effort will be a lot easier. 
there'll be two meetings a month and then maybe one or possibly two additional meetings every quarter for other committees. So we're, we're going to be able to, I think, recruit more volunteers. So I'm, I'm pretty excited about streamlining that work and making uh, being a city councilor a more enjoyable experience so more people will want to do it. It really is a lot of fun. I've learned more about sewer pipe diameter and road construction <laughs> than I ever thought I'd want to know. And it's really very, very interesting that the city employees are fun to work with. Um, it's been a really great experience. So I'm, I'm hoping that, that that effort on our part will lead to new people seeking office come next March and the, and the March, every March following that. I think that's wonderful because, um, you know, I think that the, that I, I like the idea when you, you, the streamlining conversation came up at the, in the governance committee and then into the council about looking at uh, using task forces when we need citizen inputs. So there's a, a beginning and ending rather than a, per, you know, something in perpetuity because people's lives are very busy these days. Mm -hmm. And I'd like to see every, every citizen of Lebanon, every resident of Lebanon, uh, be involved in the city in one way or the other than, than paying taxes only. Uh, r really, I think, you know, we'd like to have you involved. But we understand that people, you know, you just can't get on committee. Well, I'm on this committee, and now no one will get off this committee because, you know, I have to stay on this committee. I'm going to be on this committee the rest of my life, you know. <laughs> and so some people, even though you might enjoy a committee very much, you might have a really wonderful experience, I don't think that's a way that, to have the best sustainable community is to have uh, committees that are stagnant and, and just the same people forever. And it's kind of, one hand it oppresses them, and the other hand it's not as representative of our community as possible. Because we need to have rotation. We need fresh, we need to have fresh rotation. And I, I firmly, firmly believe that. Uh, new ideas, we need, to, we need to have experience, but then we also have to need new ideas. And so, so let the, per, and the person maybe in this world, they would be better to serve if we created a task force on a particular subject, mm -hmm. beginning, ending, scope, and have, have measurables, and have staffing appropriate to the staff task force, rather than, the, and then committees in perpetuity. There are some state, state statutes that require certain committees to be right. in existence. That's another matter. That's state law, state policy, creating the committees. They're very important. We'd like to, that away by, by, by focusing on those committees, we can better support those committees. So that better support means that helps them do their job and that makes their lives easier as members of those, those statutory committees. So I really like the fact that we did look at that streamlining. I think that was a terrific, terrific thing to do. Um, that was nice. I love that. Well, the, the other thing I think that, that's going to help is for those who haven't looked at our master plan, um, We've, we have, I don't remember the number, but I think there's 900 things we want to accomplish that are outlined in the master plan. And by having a little more, being more nimble and a little more flexibility, we're going to be able to take on some of those um, tasks and, and ideas that we've never been able to before. Because we're going to have more citizen energy and more staff energy available to do that. So I'm, I'm excited that I think it's going to actually move things forward more rapidly than we might have otherwise. Um, and, and I've been participating qu quite a bit with, recently with the Soldiers Memorial Building. And since we um, had that committee go to a, a more open format, where the committee actually went away and now the volunteers just work in the building on their own, they've been open more. They've had more visitors. They're doing more than they ever did before because they're free of the, of the restrictive uh, statutes that kept them from being able to do the things they wanted to do. And, and I think that building's come alive even, even more under Bob Terry. I think that's, that's Terry. really, so, really nicely yeah, done. Uh, yeah. uh, and you know, the building is a jewel. And one, one of the, there's so many, we have so many, in our in the Lebanon Crown, there's so many different jewels. And, and that uh, Soldier Memorial Building is certainly a jewel. Uh, one of the things that spin off of that idea was our, our partnering with veterans. Mm -hmm. You and I both are committed because of our family and because of our backgrounds in terms of veterans and people who have served our country. And um, our partnering goes far and wide. Um, and, and we have now put on the website this year a veterans page. That's right. And the veterans page has a special section devoted to the Soldier Memorial uh, uh, and a building and that so it really details how fascinating that building is and more so though it provide that web page provides resources for veterans so it is a is it is a self-help um, situation where you link if you're a veteran you can link on that page and find all types and services 
I met with them uh, in an informal way. Uh, the, Amer the American Legion guys and I, they like to come over to my place. I, I like them. And they brought over, a, they, they, they're gonna bring, they, they told me, they came over to ask me if I wanted to have an a, a American uh, flag designed vest for my bulldog. Oh, nice. And they found one and they found somebody that was going to, you know, had, had a dog and they, the dog passed away. And whether I would want to have this. And I said, sure, sure. But that helped, that's how they are. So they were in, the, in my <laughs> office and we were talking about this. And, and so um, I think the partnering there on that webpage is very nice. And I, I talked about us uh, having dialogue and communication, engaging with one another about what should be on the website. And moreover, what should we have in the community that would be supportive of veterans? Because one of the things we, you know, people say, well, thank you for your service. And I think that's respectful. But I also come to the kind of realization that really, while we do thank you for your service, we really want to, you to be with us and be part of us today. We want you to be our friend. We want you to be our neighbor. We want you to be our employee. We want you, you know, to be on our school board. We want you to be a parent that we, have, we parent our children with. We, we want to be with you because we... You know, because sometimes when it came back, there's a sense of alienation because no one can understand a veteran's experience oftentimes. And they right. mean, it's a non-veteran. Even, and every veteran has a bit of a different experience. So the way I think, I, I, was, I was listening to a, this uh, discussion, and it, it came across to me that the, the comment that was made about, not only do we want to thank you for your service, but we want to th we want you we want to be so thankful you were with us. You're here. We want you to be in Lebanon. We want you to live in Lebanon. We, we want as, we as many veterans as we can to be in Lebanon. We, want, we know how, how, how you've served, and we, we, but this, we, we know you now as a person you are, and so that we value you. We care for you. We, we, don't, want, we don't want any situations. We want, the, we want to be our you know, brothers and sisters keeper for you as a, as a veteran who, did, who is, is part of us. So. Mm -hmm. So I've been, I've been really pitching that when, I, when I've been talking to people who talk to veterans. And I think that's a good thing. Um, well, I wanted to throw something in here because mm -hmm. I was just talking to someone today. This is, a, this is a happy season, but for some people, sometimes it's a, it's a tough season. And um, you know, growing up in a military family, a lot of my friends and, and even we celebrated Christmas at a different time of year. So we did the, the, the um, religious component in December, but we had our Christmas tree some other time of the year when our dad, or in this case, nowadays, a mother comes home from service. Yeah. And so um, I, in talking with some folks today who were discussing some sad times here in the community, I suggested to them they might want to think about having their Christmas tree a different time of the year and, and have this time of the year be a, a, a time when they celebrate their, their religion, their, their, their faith, and their community. Um, and veterans have, have, are strong because of that. They, they do uh, sometimes have to move holidays around because they're on a ship or uh, in a desert somewhere. That's, you know, that's a really wonderful thought, you know, because I think that would be very useful to think about because you, you really want your family to be together and, and you do want that, but because of the nature of the duty that it can happen sometimes and if you could have those special moments together and other special moments in other ways. That's a really nifty idea. I love that idea. And I, th I think it can help fam non-military families get through some of the challenges right. of, of yeah. some of these holiday seasons. Yeah, because when people experience losses during the year, they start feeling that right now. Mm -hmm. You start feeling that going on. I think that um, I, I really commend the city and its residents for its, 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 its response to the, uh, the microburst uh, over Slayton Hill, and that people, I mean, it's not, it has not been an easy process for anyone uh, that lives on Slayton Hill, and then people that live on Dulac, and then the, and, and it hasn't been an easy process for the employees of the Lebanon who've been trying to work it, uh, and try to resolve it, but people are just really, uh, they are very, uh, such mature and so stable that they continue to strive. They just have been unceasing at trying to find a way to complete this task. Mm -hmm. and, um, and though it seems it takes, it takes longer than we most of us would, would much would like, it has nevertheless been persistent, consistent, it keeps coming. 
we are going we're going to get it done it has been worked on quite a bit this year and it'll be completed in, in next as soon as the construction season comes around we're kind of closing up for winter now on slayton hill um the people in dulac have really felt a big impact we but we we think we have a concept based on walkabouts with them that they that and the balancing act about other res, residents residents using the, the dulac street for other purposes but we're looking at those residents living there. I think we worked through something that will have the balance and satisfy their needs. And, and so and that's just based on conversation. Again, conversation between citizens, among citizens, of residents of Lebanon and um, city representatives and, and employees. So I, I'm just happy about that struggle. Um, and I hope it doesn't happen again, but I think we're, we're, we're better prepared for that and one of the things we'll talk about in the future is an emergency plan for Lebanon and continue working on that. Before we go on to the future, anything else that you'd like to reflect on in the past? Well, I, I want to thank you for what you've done over on Dulac Street and Slayton Hill because uh, I, I think the uh, response by, by management, by police and fire for the residents there, I've heard nothing but praise um, for the most part about the way that it was all handled in the last two years. and. You know, I think back to when I first got in the city council eight years ago and the, the minor things that could explode in our faces. And here was a, a major disaster that I thought was managed extremely well, considering we'd not had anything like it before, or at least not in my lifetime here in Lebanon. So I wanted to thank you for that and, and pass on the thanks of the council to the employees and also to the people of Slayton Hill and Dulac Street, because I know it has been tough and, st and stressful for all of them. But I agree, I think it's been handled in a very mature way. and. Uh, it's been pretty civil conversation. It has been. I mean, I, and there's some heartfelt issues out there. <laughs> As we go on to next year, one of the things I'm celebrating about the next coming year is new leadership. Um, within the city as an organization, I, I, you know, I have, we've had some really fine veteran leaders. And, um, but there's a passing of the torch. I always think of cities that the cities are in a marathon. And it's actually a more than a marathon. It's it's really a relay marathon, and uh, so so our new leadership in public works is congealing. We have added to our professional uh, leadership team to our public works director Mike Lavella, two assistant public works directors, both who have engineering degrees and extensive experience and background with communities. Bruce Temple, but taken on lots of responsibility with regard to our roads, our bridges, the. The, the tunnel alternative project. And then our newest member, uh, Wayne Leonard, who will be taking on uh, wastewater and water, uh, which is his specialty. He actually started out as a plumber when he started out in life. So it's amazing <laughs> this guy is amazing because you know, having an engineering degree and all those, all those credentials he has, but he's really a, a hands-on great person. So I'm, I'm celebrating new leadership. And I, and I guess as we were talking, we talked a lot about the past because I kind of enjoyed this year in many ways. And we've got a couple minutes here. So from your perspective, Georgia, in terms of what lies ahead, um, uh, what, what comes onto your mind? Well, um, <clears throat> we have elections coming up in March, and uh, I'm hoping that there will be some folks in Lebanon who will come down and talk with you and talk with some of the other counselors serving and, and make the leap to either join some of our boards or committees, uh, take a run for city council, at least come, in, come to the meetings and learn a little more about it. It's actually a lot of fun. Um, we, we, we need to have new leadership there. Eventually, th those of us who have served can't serve forever. So I'm really hoping we're going to get some, some new blood uh, with an interest in just understanding how the city works. I'm, so th that's, that's my wish for the coming years, we can get some new interest. Well, that's an invitation to everybody. Because uh, everywhere we go, really, it's a great, it's a great thing to serve. It really and is. Be, you don't, you know, and I, like I say, I, it doesn't have to be a perpetuity thing. It really, <laughs> it shouldn't I, it really be. could be a part where you spend some time together. Um, so I, I think that's, you know, really fascinating. I, I think that um, one overarching thing that has come out of the implementing of the master plan is the idea of, re, uh, of tr trying to decide what the identity will be to fully implement the master plan and, and how we can do this in a natural, organic way. So we look at where people settled in Lebanon, in villages in the past, where they're settled now, and how can we ease their life, their lives, 
in the places that they have settled historically, the places they are settling now. So that the destination that they have chosen to be here in Lebanon is the best possible destination for themselves, for their family, and for their, their um, future well-being, and developing those villages in a way that meets all our outcome levels, being, you know, have them be economically vital, have them be sustainable and resilient to stand up to whatever is dealt with us. I mean, it's, a, it's a challenging world with weather, with environment, with cha political change. Uh, to make sure we keep on our physical re responsibility toes uh, and make sure that we, we keep it safe. Yeah. We just keep it safe. We want to keep it safe here. And uh, all that means excellent planning. And so excellent planning is, is not throw out you know, everything in, with the bathwater but rather to, to recognize the history, the preservation, the, the conservation, and still pursue economic vitality that, is, that, that will be the kind of economic vitality that the community wishes to have. So we ha try to exercise more proactivity rather than just allow it to happen and then figure it out. Let's try to be more proactive in what we are. And I think that's going to be part of the implementation of the master plan. It's been going on for a while, but I think it's quite a challenge. Closing thought? I just hope everybody has a wonderful holiday and um, a very Merry Christmas. Same here. Same here. Have the best of holidays. Um, I will be finishing off the eggnog, and, and George and I have <laughs> some cookies. Uh, both of us are probably trying to be healthy, <laughs> so I don't think I think we better quit and finish, but we will. Um, we hope you all out there have a healthy and uh, a, 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 a holiday of well-being, and take good care of each other. And remember, we got to pull together to, in Lebanon uh, to move forward, and that's the way we can do it. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank you.